Hello, this is Brian Funk, and thank you for listening to the Music Production Podcast. I'm very excited to announce that my new book, The Five Minute Music Producer, is now available in paperback form, a real book that you can hold and touch and turn to any page you like in a second. And it's a pretty big book, 629 pages of activities, exercises, and wisdom I've learned over the years. It's available on Amazon.com. Five Minute Music Producer is 365 music making activities that will help with your songwriting and music production. It'll help you fight writer's block, make more music, write better lyrics, develop solid workflows, learn techniques for generating ideas, and finish more music. It's like having your very own music production personal trainer giving you ideas and challenges each day. And the best part is the challenges are quick and easy, and they only take a few minutes. So even if you don't have a lot of time, you can spend five minutes and advance your music production skills. There's no better time to improve your music than now. Imagine where you'll be after a year of these activities. The Five Minute Music Producer has hit the number one new release in the music songwriting and music recording and sound categories on Amazon. So check out the Five Minute Music Producer, 365 music making activities. It's available on amazon.com. Or you can go to brianfunk.com slash book. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Music Production Podcast. I'm your host, Brian Funk. On today's show, I have Matthew Petre. And Matt is a musician, producer, educator. And we first crossed paths in our Berkeley class, which was pretty cool. So Matt made some amazing music in the sampling class. Um, it, I often refer to that as like, as you know, I'm, I'm the teacher technically, but I feel like the biggest student half the time because I get to hear what everyone does and learn from them. So it's a nice educational experience for me. And Matt has released an album under his name, his moniker, Yase Mare which I hope I'm saying right. Yeah, yeah. I wrote right. it out phonetically for myself. <laughs> Yase Mare, um, yeah. which means wild ocean. And it's it's kind of like a combination of electronic, some singer-songwriter things. And, you know, I was listening mm -hmm. back to some of your older stuff, which is much more singer-songwriter Americana stuff. So it was cool to see the lines and the dots connect. Anyway, we've practically been talking for 20 minutes now, just catching up. So we had to hit the record button. Matt, it's great to have you here. Nice to see you again. Yeah, it's great to be here. Great to see you too, Brian. Yeah, I'm I'm stoked we can do this and we can talk about that, you know, music, that that domain of art that we love. And um, it's just like, oh man, it's just so it's it's great to it's great to be able to have a conversation about about you know the whole the whole process. And our class was, yeah, our class was super interesting. I mean, all the tech stuff, all the, the technical stuff that is embedded in Ableton. And I mean, that, and how to, how to sample sounds and how to mm. play with them and manipulate them. I mean, it's so, I never thought, like, I never thought I'd be like, you know, adjusting a filter and be so excited about it. <laughs> you know? right. it's, like, it's like, oh, yeah. oh my gosh, this delay. I can I can make these delay in different times and hmm. you know, and then I could adjust this filter and change the sound a little bit. And like it's just like I never thought I'd be doing that stuff. And now I'm just like, oh my God, I love it so much. Like I can do it for like three straight hours and just like forget to eat. You know? Yeah. Well, I often get lost in the sounds when I'm making them. And, and that's when I know it's like a good thing because you just like get caught up in the world. And, and that's something I love about music is it creates like this world for you to go into and kind of get away from this regular world we're in, which, uh, you know, as, as full of beauty as it is, it's nice to also get away from once in a while. Um, but yeah, I'm with you. Like, uh, I think we probably have similar backgrounds musically in that. Like I started on guitar and playing bands and stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, I think, I, I know you do piano, guitar as well, but was it guitar that was your first yeah. entry yeah. into the world of music? Yeah. yeah, I got a guitar for my 13th birthday. And oh, I cool. got an acoustic guitar for my 13th birthday and I loved it so much. And um, I took lessons um, as a kid and 
Yeah, but that's what was that was my introduction to music. Was that out of the blue? Just let's let's get Matt a guitar, see what he thinks. <laughs> um, I asked for it. I think uh-huh. I was, um, like, yeah, I had gotten. I basically was really into the Beatles, and I bought. I had. I was buying Beatles CDs, <laughs> and then like playing them on this little this little um system that I had in my room. And um, it was like one, you know, one tray of a CD and like it would, you hit the button and the tray comes out, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and like, I would just put like Revolver, the Beatles Revolver was the first CD I ever bought. And, um, and so, yeah, I was just like, I love that music. And then I got Rubber Soul and um, Let It Be. And, you know, um, that's when it started. And I was like, I really want to learn to play guitar. And my cousin actually plays guitar i i have my cousin steve um had a fender strat so i remember as a kid like he had like a you know a fender tube amp and a fender strat and anytime we'd visit them you know he had it like set up in the basement you know it was like it was the (laughs) you know a concrete floor and then like some rugs on the floor and he would play so yeah for me it was uh it was guitar and um yeah, I just love the sound of a guitar and I love, love the sound, you know, learning about all the different, you know, chords and different patterns on guitar and all that. Yeah. Older cousin, younger cousin? Or? So he was an older cousin. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's exactly 10 years older than me. So, and so you like, probably looked he, up to him and the cool cousin yeah. that plays guitar. Yeah. It's funny how there's yeah. like people like that in our lives. Yeah. yeah. I have a picture of when I was nine. I have these like stonewashed jeans and I was nine and I was wearing this sweater and I'm, I'm like, I'm just like looking at the camera and his, his strat is just leaned up against the wall. He had a yellow strat and it's just leaned up against the wall. (laughs) So that was one of the earliest, Hmm. one of the earliest like photos of me with a guitar. And um, Hmm. I had an acoustic, when I got my acoustic guitar, there's a picture of me sitting on my bed playing it and, you know, my mom used to be like, you know, he'll just stay in that room and play the guitar. <laughs> you know, uh-huh. it sounds so nice, honey. <laughs> <You know? laughs> like cool. it just, it was a way of like, it was kind of a, yeah, a way of, you know, just discovering. That's how I discovered music, basically. Mm. And then, um, yeah. And then, you know, I have other, obviously from, from uh, the Beatles, I got into other things, other guitar music and all that. So, mm. Yeah. How about you? What guitar was your first your first yeah. instrument? Yeah, I was yeah. fourteen, and uh-huh. a friend of mine brought his guitar up and showed me to play Andrew Sandman. <laughs> oh, nice! I, it never occurred to me ever up until yeah. that point that if I had an instrument, I could play the music that I heard. Like I just never, I wasn't around people that were doing that, so it was, it wasn't until mm-hmm. he did that, and I was. And and when your friend does something, you kind of like, oh, like we can do that. Like, because we play with action figures together. We draw pictures together. Like, this is another thing. So it it like empowers you, you know, because before I never had any kind of interest in playing music. Um, I liked listening to it, but it wasn't, you know, I just didn't think like I was a music, a musician, you know, I wasn't in band in school. So. Mm -hmm. That was just the whole world that for the first 14 years of my life, I didn't know was a possibility that you can play the songs on the instruments if you just knew how, <laughs> you know, where to like right, put your fingers. Right. So, um, yeah, it was very similar, same time. Yep. It, it was also, when I was a kid too, it wasn't super popular. Like, you know, most kids at my high school played sports and then there were like, three or four there were only like three or four of us i remember that played that actually played guitar i was like oh you play you know so it was like it was a very um at that time not not a super popular thing whereas Mm -hmm. i think i think it became i don't know guitar as like a thing became more more common later on but it still felt like oh my you know i'm doing something that like most people don't do right (laughs) Yeah, you know. yeah, probably are, um, <laughs> you know, <yeah. laughs> it's easy, you know, like <laughs> some, the way the world works now with like our social media feeds and stuff. I go on social media and you think everybody's playing guitar, has a synthesizer collection, makes music on Ableton Live and, <laughs> right. you know, but totally. it's such a small fraction of like the yeah. average group of people. 
<laughs> totally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's it's awesome you got this album done. So it's called EP2. Um, and you, is that just last month, right? February? Yeah. 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 Congratulations. You did Thank the you. nearly Thanks. impossible. You finished music and put it out. <laughs> I mean, I, it, it's, it's a great accomplishment, you know? Um, it's because I'm sure you know just how hard it is, you know, all the challenges we face. I'm sure everyone listening knows, like, it's very difficult to see your ideas through, to get the inspiration even to start sometimes and to finish it. So, you know, good for you. Congratulations. Thanks. And it sounds thank great. You. It is. Yeah. Thank you so much. It is. Um, yeah. So many hours, <laughs> so yeah. many hours and so much. Um, you know, I think the different stages of making a project too, like there's like composing the music and then there's, mm. you know, really, really making a song complete, you know, for, for three or four or five minutes, you know, like with all the parts and then there's taking the time to record it into your DAW and then, you know, and then like doing all the little tweaks and edits to, to make it sound smooth and, you know, make, make those parts flow together really nicely and the transition, you know, all that. So it's, it's, um, it's a, it's, it really takes a lot of time, <laughs> you know, sure. I think, pay, I think I, you know, like just the patience involved is just like, you're like, oh, uh, you know, it's just like, oh, this is another hour. Here's another two hours. Here's a, you know, let me add a little bass. Okay. I like the bass line the whole time, except the, at the end, let me take it up an octave, you mm -hmm. know, it'll increase the energy if I take it up an octave. So let's, let's, let's bring that in, record that, set up the audio interface, you know? So it's, um, it's, uh, yeah, it's like, you know, as a person who, one of the biggest challenges I think for me in making, making composing and really making a full project is just to be willing to be alone for a long time hmm. <laughs> you yeah. know you know like as a as like someone who composes and makes you know and records all of the music into ableton i just like yeah i'm just like oh okay i'm gonna be home all day today in my studio you know for um for most of the day and I think I'm going to go for a run just so that I don't like lose my mind, <laughs> but like, mm -hmm. you know, but like, if I want to, you know, if I want to play those, those chord changes as smoothly as possible, if I want to, you know, and I'm going to improvise on those changes a little bit and make some pads with violins and then play with those pads. And like, that's the whole day right there. <laughs> you yeah. know, like If you, it, you know, depending on, especially, you know, and I think that's something that we could talk about too. Like, how do you, all those like intuitive things of like, when are you done? When do you decide that you're done? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you know, how, how many different ways can you play, you know, C to A minor, you know, to D minor or whatever. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. And um, so that I found it to be, I find it to be very, that's another, another piece of it, which, you know, I'm sure you're familiar with, like, just, um, I think you had said this once in a previous, conversation too that like you make so many decisions making music it's like you make a hundred you know you know yeah. you make like a hundred decisions per song you know which stuck I, I which stuck with me like oh my gosh like I've got if I want this song to be done and by implication if I want this whole project to be done I have to make hundreds of decisions like that this thing this is going to be the chord progression and this is going to be the verse and this is going to be the vocal melody and this vocal take is going to be better than the other four vocal takes. And mm -hmm. <laughs> like, you know, that, so there's just, there's so many decisions to make. It's crazy. It's, that's how I see it almost more than anything now is, is just commitment and decision. And a lot of what I try to do is eliminate as many of those as I can right off the bat. So even just deciding like what genre I'm going to write in. Mm -hmm. and, and then I'll think about like, all right, like, what is this song for? Like, what kind of mood, what situations would a person put this song on for? When would I want to hear this song? And if I can get a bunch of those things decided, 
then good. Like, okay. Um, and then there's like the decision, well, what's it going to be about? What's the topic? What's the theme? What's the angle? What's the like perspective on this particular thing? And the more you can just like go, I think it's like, just, you have to just go. You have to push forward. Like, it's just going to be this and then let's go and, and make it into something and sort of trust that you'll make the right decisions along the way based on your taste. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. cause you can get so caught up in like, I don't know if that's like, is this clever enough? Is this been done before? Or, uh, that, that you can second guess every single decision infinitely along the way. But right. the only way to get anything done is to just commit. And a lot of times it's a blind commitment. Like you don't really know what it's going to sound like. You don't know where it's going to take you. Um, and that's hard. And I think there's like something to be said about like decision fatigue is some science probably that, uh, you know, we get worn out the more we have to make decisions. And I'm, I know, mm -hmm. especially when I'm laboring on decisions, I can feel that tiring me out it's like you know mental work and i think what you said though like going for a run is, is a big help like once in a while to just get out of it when you feel that fatigue coming on yeah yep the breaks are so important and the resting is so important for it's, sure it's and tricky it to know when <laughs> and because i know for myself too i always know like if i take mm -hmm. a break i'm at risk of not coming back to it and mm -hmm. getting distracted or something else will come up so that's mm -hmm. always a fear and maybe keeps me going longer than i should sometimes yeah how do you feel about this this might be a little like out of left field but i think it's it's relevant is that like I've been thinking about the idea of like compartmentalization, you mm -hmm. know, that like you hear this, like this idea, I don't know, like, I don't know how often it's really talked about. I don't know because, but I think, you know, it tends to like when you, grow, when you get older, you know, you grow up and you have a job and then you have to sort of like compartmentalize different parts of your life so that you can, transition from this one this one thing you're doing to this other thing that you need to do you know and then from there you know it's like i always felt like i wasn't that good at that mm. <laughs> like i wasn't i just wanted you know i always felt like and i still do it i still do it as a part of my life as like an adult with responsibilities and stuff but when it comes to making music like i i just need to be in the deep end and not compartmentalize anything, you know, mm -hmm. in a way like I cannot, you know, I can't compose something like in the energy that I want to compose it in. If I'm, you know, thinking like, oh, I've got to go to the post office and then like, we need some more bread. And then like, <laughs> you know, like, oh, I'm going to go meet the kids after school. And like, I can't be in that at all. Yeah. Like if I'm trying to actually compose. Now, if you're doing something like post-production, like you're like, okay, I'm working on delays and reverbs and like, whatever, like that stuff you can do in like, you know, little, little pieces of time, you know, it's a more directive, directed um, task. But when it comes to like composing and like experimenting and improvising, like I'm, I'm terrible with, you know, mm. with like doing, I'm terrible with transitioning back into that. If I've already been doing all these other like sort of adult things, yeah. you know? Yeah. Uh, Cause that's like the creative stuff, I guess. And a lot of that relies on inspiration and mood and, how you feel, you know, if I want to make like an exciting rock song, like I can't really do that when I'm tired. It just doesn't really work. So I need to kind of be in that moment. But when you're talking about like mixing delays and crafting reverts, that to me is craft, right? So that's where I'm sculpting the thing. I'm doing less experimental stuff, more like craft is the word. I think of it like art and craft really. The art mm -hmm. is a lot of the, there's art and the craft as well, but 
there's kind of the more like free flowing creative stuff, which is a little bit harder to jump in than if I'm like, all right, you know, I just have to, you know, trim these tracks so that the the silences are muted and I don't have the bleed from the microphone when I'm not singing. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. That's technical. Yeah. That doesn't really require the same kind of mental energy. And mm -hmm. and the the mental like immersion in it. Uh though I've also kind of found that you can't wait for that either. Like if you wait for the motivation and the lightning bolt to strike, like it almost never does. And and if it does, it's like when you're driving somewhere away from your music, you know, <laughs> like when you can't get to it. But I do think that a lot of times when you just get to work, you just sort of force yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, like it, it feels like a drag sometimes. You're like, all right, I just got to like make myself work today for like an hour and come up with something. What usually happens is I find it. You know, I like doing this. Uh, it's fun. And sometimes it takes mm -hmm. like a, an inch. Oh, I made a little, this beat's cool. Yeah, all right, okay. And then I'm in there, you know? But if I mm -hmm. don't like sit down, and be like, all right, let's see. Let's, what kind of beat? Let's just make this. And then if I don't get through that kind of uh, the forcing mm -hmm. it part. It happens even in like band practice. Like sometimes we get together. Usually it's like Thursdays and it's after work. And maybe if I didn't have a commitment, I'd take a nap. <laughs> and but the fact is like they're the guys are coming over and yeah. they're gonna be here and even like they're here we're laughing we're talking whatever and it's like time to play it's like all right i gotta pick myself up but once yeah. we get it going you know once we get the blood flowing it, it tends mm -hmm. to arrive so i i trust it to show up a little bit um mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and if not if it's not gonna show up at least i'm hoping that I'm learning. I'm working on the craft or the technique of it a little bit too. So it's not a total loss. I don't yeah. know why it's so hard to get started because, I mean, I don't have to do any of this stuff. Like, there's, <laughs> like no one said, like, you have to make music. <laughs> like, it's not, it's right. like we, we choose this, right? Like, it's something we chose because we love it. Yet, yeah, I think it's like a fear thing and that's what I, for me I think it is it's like I'm afraid I won't be able to do it I'm afraid it might not come out good I'm afraid it'll be this or that mm -hmm. or the other thing I'm afraid I won't have the energy to make it the way I want it to um, but mm -hmm. I, it's like you just gotta jump in kind of yeah well what I've done is like I guess what I've done is for myself, and I'm not sure if this would work for other musicians, but what I've done is to sort of think of it, think of my music practice as just having different domains. So, you know, if I only have an hour, you know, I might, I might, you know, sit at the piano, I'll work on some scales, I'll play some chord progressions, and just like, I'll just think of it as like, um, I'm maintaining my skills, <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, it's like, I'm not Exercise. trying to push. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm not trying to push the envelope. I'm not trying to like compose something wild and new or something. I'm just like, I'm just going to enjoy the sound of the piano and, and just like, and just feel the energy of it. And, um, and, uh, so I've gotten into that's how I help myself do it as regularly as possible, you know. So usually every day I'll I'll play either piano or guitar for at least an hour. And you know, sometimes I'll take a day off or something, but I'm usually trying to do that and then if I have a composition stuff where I'm like actually like I want to write songs, I've got I've got this little fragment, it sounds sick. I I need to like add another part to it. I need to like Maybe I'm going to layer something else or throw on an arpeggiator or arpeggiator and create some, some harmonies popping around or something, you know, like, and I'm, that's when I really feel like I need extended periods of time hmm. where I need to, because that's what I think that's where Ableton comes in, where Ableton stimulates my imagination in ways that nothing else really has. Like the fact that I can, you know, duplicate a scene 
and then, you know, select a different instrument in a chain list or something, and then just like slightly alter that, that groove, you know, um, that really stimulates my imagination in the sense of like, maybe I could do this, or maybe like, maybe this synthy thing happens for three bars and then the piano fades in in the fourth bar to conclude the phrase you know hmm. and so and then and then here comes the groove again in bar one if, if assuming it's like a four bar loop so like i really yeah so that's my my point is like i feel like i really need extended periods of time to let my imagination like Oh, I'm going to duplicate this scene. Let me try this. Like, let me, let me like take out a few of these MIDI notes and then like import a couple others in on a different track or I need, but I, I love that feeling. That's when I feel like I'm really in it. Mm -hmm. That's when I feel like, you know, like this is, this is unique or this is like, not like, you know, not this, this is like something that I, this is happening and it's cool and I wasn't planning it. <laughs> you know right. so that's part of the composition process that i really love and something about ableton that i really love is like you know i've done a you know i've done a thing speaking of guitar like i'll do a thing where i like i'm like okay this is in d let me do some b minor pentatonic stuff and like i'll do the solo in b minor pentatonic and then um let me take it up to a let me play some a pentatonic or something um, and then it will be like, I'll, you know, I'll start to like play in Ableton with like, oh, this couple bars was great. And then, oh, this is cool. And I'll put those, you know, I'll start splitting and separating them and then merging different parts of the improvisation together. And then, and then I'm like, oh, I need a, I want, I would like to have a conclusion for this. And it doesn't sound like it's concluding. So let me do this here come let's turn on the interface da, 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 you know mm -hmm. so then i got this whole new thing that like was just randomly came out of the sky essentially yeah. you know so uh i don't mean to talk i don't want to like over talk it but like it's i'm also mm -hmm. kind of working out like how it works i'm also trying to explain how it works for me um yeah. is that once i put it into ableton and i'm playing it back to myself i get a whole other like kind of tidal wave of ideas mm -hmm. which yeah, then think, more it morphs my original idea generally i think that's a great way to work because you're kind of doing like you're inputting stuff and then you're evaluating it you're seeing what works and probably it sounds like to me like you kind of just let it record for a while and then you look back for the stuff that's good grab it put it in there um, cause I love working mm -hmm. that way too. And it's actually the way I work playing in bands a lot too, is a lot of ideas come out of jams and it might be yeah. a, a 10 minute jam. And then there's just like eight bars that were awesome. That become the song. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Same thing in live. It really lets you just kind of jam, you know, it lets you play and improvise and the music keeps going, keeps playing. It's, it's very nice for that. And, I, I do that a lot where I'll I'll play for a while, play for a while, and just maybe I'm recording like for 40 minutes. And a lot of times that becomes like my listening material even for the next day. And I'm, I'm trying to find the stuff I like and come back to it. Um, but it's a cool mm -hmm. way to, to just throw things out. And then you combine them in ways that you, would, you wouldn't play it that way. You, you know, like I wouldn't put those two ideas together or maybe I couldn't even do it because it'd be impossible to play but it allows you to try things it's another instrument that's how i see it you know i see it as like another instrument like it turns the studio into an instrument and, and that's from that's yeah. part of it for me i like that stage yeah me too it's me too i think it's, it's become critical for me like uh -huh. it, it, i've made my favorite stuff that way in the sense of like, you know, it all comes out of improvisations. Like if I'm sitting at the keyboard or the piano, I'm just like, oh, like this B flat nine to this like C nine add six. Like, I like that. Like, that's a good idea. 
you know, that comes from just like playing and just liking the sound of it, <laughs> you know, and then putting it into Ableton, I, I just start to, I develop it from there or, or grow it from there hmm. in various ways. And, um, you know, I'll often, another thing it's great for is vocals that you can just play back. You could just play back your, your verse pads and just like sit there with the keyboard and with your voice and just start just being like, do I want to sing? Maybe I should try to sing an arpeggio there. Oh, I've never sang that before. Let me try this. Like, <laughs> like, let me go D F sharp, a B D or something, <laughs> something like that. And then I'll be like, I do like that. I like, you know, that's, let me practice that. So I'll be like, you know, I'll just try to sing it. So yeah, just it's become so Ableton's become such a such a key part of how I make a song. That, mm. you know, in contrast to the Americana stuff, you know, which is like I feel like I'm Johnny Cash, like I'm strumming, you know, I'm strumming right. a guitar and I'm just singing things that I enjoy, you know, and then I'm just deciding about okay, I want this vocal phrase here and here comes the chorus and this is what the vocal is going to do at this point. I do like working that way. I just felt for me, it felt like I just wanted to, I wanted to kind of like wander into a different garden, sort of like Ableton's helped me like wander into a different place and like develop things in a different way. Mm -hmm. That's it. It's nice to have tools that make you come up with different stuff whether you're playing guitar or playing keyboards or a push or like you're just gonna come up with different patterns and melodies and chord progressions it's nice to mix that up maybe a sequencer who knows i've always thought mm -hmm. of live like what really got me into it i was like oh this is a great songwriting tool like oh because like i would write the old way where I'd have like my parts and I'd put them together and then you have to record them left to right mm -hmm. and they're kind of stuck in that and if it works great if not you have to sort of redo it I liked being able to say hmm, maybe this part goes in the beginning maybe I'll save this part for later maybe I'll switch the drums from the verse to the chorus and just to see what happens and it happens so quickly that way for vocals I, I do the, what I, kind of what I was saying before, just let it go, let it run and just blabber. <laughs> just, <laughs> just gibberish comes out and um, yeah. once in a while I find, I say something even like, oh, that was kind of a cool thing to say in a song. <laughs> we'll use that. Or I'm looking for like where the melodies are, where the consonants are, where the vowels are, the long notes, the short notes, like all phrasing stuff. Um, and a lot of times I even write the words based on like what the gibberish sounds like. It's almost like I'm interpreting it I'm like, okay, I need something that has like this rhythm. And, mm -hmm. and I think there's like a cool thing that happens. Sometimes it, it takes you in a little more of an abstract direction with the lyrics, but there's something kind of neat where the collaboration is sort of like, well, here's the phrasing. Now let's fit the words to it. And, these are the sounds and what is that sort of, and you get, you say things you wouldn't normally say and stick things together. And this yeah. is like some subconscious, probably like Freudian analysis you could do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I noticed on your, yeah, I, I like, I like the, your style of vocals on the some good evil record and on your, also on your solo songs that you put on YouTube, you know, like, I think it, I think it really works for your, for what you're doing cool you know it works really well there's that song i think i mentioned um oh you have this you have this one song where you this is it say something true yes is that the name <laughs> of the a song good evil song yeah say something yeah true. yeah yeah i like that one and well, my that's heart... a funny the funny issue yeah. about that song it was kind of just a guitar riff that popped out of nowhere and um mm -hmm. I the first line is I have my mind made up about you. <laughs> it's just what I said in practice, you know. And then it's like, well, now where does that go? And then it's like, all right, well, that sort of means like they thought something was one way, but maybe it's not that way. And it took like months of just playing that song and blabbering and lyrics mm -hmm. pop out here and there. But it wasn't until it was like 
the one is the line in the chorus that's like it would be nice if you could just once say something true <laughs> and i was like there's <laughs> yeah. the idea you know and that's always the moment yeah. i'm trying to find like what is this essence of this song like where what's the idea mm -hmm. and once that happens i i feel yeah. good about it like i know everything will come together it's a matter of putting the puzzle together now and a lot of times the gibberish lyrics have already told me where the notes and the melodies and the rhythms go. And now it's like, cool, now I got to come up with words that fit this pattern that lead me to this, you know, say something true. <laughs> yeah. And I like yeah. that. To me, that feels a little less like forceful. It's more like the song blossoms rather than I'm like screwing things together and trying to get this part to fit in the square hole and <laughs> you know because it can mm -hmm. it can get like that sometimes where you're just trying to like crank everything into position i like the sort of like it just sort of unfolds over time mm -hmm. yeah it works it it works it's interesting the way the yeah i guess the essence just kind of emerges <laughs> randomly and that's what I, it kind of reminds me of something that i've I've talked with with some other music friends like like you know some you know people like my song 1985 a friend asked me about that song and he's like you know like what are those chords like how did you write that song and I'm like I don't know, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like my answer is like there's no I don't like I know the chords obviously but I'm like you know it's just I don't think there's any internal logic. There's no special internal logic that like helps you write, you know, a three minute song that you really like, like you don't go, Oh, like, let me look at the map. Here's the map. Like, you know, mm. I take the highway to, to there that exit and I get off and then, you know, like there's no logic to it. <laughs> like it makes, I don't know. You know, I, I have a sense of, I mean, I, I know what that song's about and I, that song is really sort of a a critique of nostalgia in a way. And um and uh and I know that it has a personal resonance for me, but like I, you know, and I I like the timbres. It has, you know, it has um violins and cellos in it, it has piano, it has electric guitar. Um, and I sing a lot in it and I like the melody, but like, you know, I don't, it happens very piecemeal. I don't know. <laughs> you yeah. know, it's just like, I don't think, you know, connected to your point or about the essence, like, I just don't think it's sort of magical how you find the essence or, or like the, the mysterious energy of a particular song. Like you do feel something in a personal way that's really, emotional or something but like it's very hard to it's very hard to like randomly you know on wednesday i'm gonna write a song like that or something mm -hmm. it's just like what, you know and it's like there's no it's hard to even describe where that comes from that magic that magical moment or whatever <laughs> yeah, and i can remember them almost all of them when they happen like i remember that day when that line came together and it's like there it is like we, it's mm -hmm. like we're shining a light in the water and like we found the crab now we can catch it <laughs> like yeah <laughs> yeah, well, yeah the crabbing me uh, metaphor comes to mind but it's like you, you just you know there's, there's something here but there it is and now you can follow it and then you can take it i don't know that i would be the kind of person I could sit with if I could read music that I could have sit with like a staff and a pen and write out music like it just I don't know mm -hmm. that, that I don't even feel that excited about that thought either it's like I'm I'm looking for a feeling and a lot of it's fumbling in the dark until you get it and sometimes you know like you've got like this guitar riff has like it's, it's making me feel something but I don't know what it's about and that's sometimes when the gibberish works well because after like a couple minutes of gibberish, like you just start saying stuff because you, now mm -hmm. you're not monitoring yourself. And you mentioned this in like our emails, like one thing you like to think about is like fun and play. And 
it's you know like when you're like writing songs you feel like such an artist sometimes like oh serious artist here i'm gonna now i have yeah. to put emotions into this and you know make sense and be clever but when when you're doing gibberish which is already like silly it kind of breaks down the uh expectation a little bit and the filter comes off and you can mm -hmm. sometimes things just come out and and a lot of times you say stupid things too it's like I'm, well i'm not going to use that but it's you have to kind of let your guard down a little and be okay with being stupid silly or like cheesy mm -hmm. or every like you just <laughs> I think that's the hard part for me is like letting that down so that I, I can just let all that stuff out. And it doesn't matter if I'm silly, cheesy, and this is a bad music, song, melody, everything. Because it's not so much like, that's not what I'm critical of. I, I'm looking for the thing that's not that stuff, that the thing is cool. So, and, that, and I'm not going to present the other stuff to the world or anything. So when mm -hmm. i can get to that like play where it doesn't matter and who cares and it'll be f and if it's stupid it's funny you know just mm -hmm. to let go cuz then i can use the taste you know our, our musical taste our opinions about music to find the things i like within all of that yeah yeah you've mentioned taste a few times and um <clears throat> i've yeah i i've I've been thinking about that lately, actually. And um, do you want to share some stuff about taste? Like, I think people are kind of, you know, I think it's a sensitive topic because people like different things. And so there's these, like, maybe some kind of sensitive layers to the idea of taste. But I'm curious how you th think about it. I, I come from, I am very, if if anything, if anything in addition to kind of like really moving fully into music, which I've done over the last five years, I've really moved fully into just, you know, just like loving music, spending most of my time involved in music. Um, I really feel like having a strong sense of what my taste is, is um, has helped a lot. Like it helps me make decisions, <laughs> you know, in certain ways. But, you know, the other side of that is the fun and the play. If you're too, you know, if you're too strict about your taste, then the fun and the play gets like, you're just like, you end up putting a lot of pressure on yourself to like make something match your, your taste, <laughs> you know, yeah. really. So, but I'm curious, I would love to talk about fun and play as well, but I just had a question about taste just because I've been randomly thinking about it recently. Like, how do you think about taste or... Well, I think when I was younger, I think I've had taste, strong tastes in music. Now, I don't mean it in the like, oh, that guy's got taste, you know? I don't mean it like that. It's just like maybe preference, right? Uh, and when I was younger, it was really strict. Like, I only liked things that did this and that. And um, mm -hmm. so I knew what it was when I liked it. And I think I was also, it made me kind of hypercritical of anything I made because it didn't, no, it's not good, it's not good. And, and then that's not a good place to be creatively. Like, no, 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 no. Negative, negative, right? Because even when the good stuff happens, you'll find a way to not like it after a few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> but to have a more like open mind, and, and I've my musical tastes have expanded tremendously since I was like 15 years old. Uh, to be more open about it allows other things to come in. And then I can take what I know that I prefer and go in those directions. But I think maybe some of the biggest lessons I've had in this like kind of thing with, with taste and trusting it is in the January stuff. So the January, if... Uh, you know, if anyone hasn't heard of that, it's when you try to make like a new piece of music every day in January. Just every day make a new jam. And it's not about being good or bad. It's like you showed up and you did it. That's the victory. Mm, and cool. there were so yeah. many days when, you know, it's like 10 o'clock and you're like, oh my God, I got work. I got to go to bed. Mm -hmm. I, I, need, I need to do this though. I didn't finish it today. And I, I'd start making music 
without the luxury of deciding whether it was good enough or not. <laughs> so it's just like, boom, 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 those are the chords, uh, whatever. They're the simple, basic chords, whatever, you know, nursery rhyme chords. Th th I have to do that because I, I got to get to work. I got to, I mean, I got to finish so I can go to bed to get to work the next day, right? So <laughs> there's no time to even have those thoughts. But once I've committed to like, all right, it's going to be this beat. These are the chords. This, that, then I think that's when the taste comes in and you start kind of naturally making decisions that you like. And I've had a lot of those types of jams turn into things I actually enjoy quite a lot. And I don't think I would have made them because in another situation, I don't think I would have made them because I would have been like, well, that's too simple. I need to be more clever than that. You know, I should really incorporate some more complex melodic structure and harmonies and you know, just all this like insecurities really just come and get a chance to come to <laughs> the surface but mm -hmm. when when you decide on something and you're going to work off it then you can build that in a little more so it's kind of a, a i guess the way i'm thinking of it is to be open to trying things seeing where they go and sort of trusting that like you'll your musical taste will help you find what you like and add things that you like um and it definitely happened a lot with the album i made with my band where there's three of us making these songs kind of as we go and then there's one song in particular um it was called time to kill that was that was really like the song Chris liked. He's our drummer. Like he was really into that song. I would have gave up on it. You know, I would have let that one go because I wasn't seeing the direction. I wasn't. I wasn't getting that moment of like, what is this song? You know, like this is the essence. This is the thing. It just wasn't coming to me. Mm -hmm. But we had to. You know, he felt strongly about it. So as we're we're a three piece, and it's kind of like we always have a democracy two out of three right like two people can vote and they win but we don't really do it that way it's more like like i guess he liked it enough that it was more than myself and alex the bass player didn't like it you know what i mean so he had more energy in the positive fourth than the two of us put together in the negative so like as like good bandmates we were pushing through it, trying to figure out how to make the song work. And eventually we got there and it was like a puzzle and, but it wound up being like, all right, so like we got to bring things we like about making music to this song. And I think eventually it, it, it actually happened with like a little guitar riff in the chorus for me. It was just this kind of like, mm -hmm. I think of it as like a, like a wild west guitar, like a spaghetti Western Barrow, narrow, 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 narrow. Like it was just kind of this little riff that just goes kind of over the chords, mm -hmm. but it just took it somewhere for me where I was like, okay, that's cool. I like this now. Yeah. Um, and I'm glad to have that where there are sometimes there's other people like insisting on something that you would maybe not go for. And it probably happens the other way around too, where I'm like, no, this is cool. Let's do this. Let's do this. And mm -hmm. they, they sort of have to... It's like you're trusting each other's taste, too. Yeah. But that's so much of it is just... I guess you get to like a certain point with your instruments and producing where you, you, you know like you have the chops to make things and then you can kind of trust that your taste will get you there. And the consequences of being wrong are none <laughs> it's like <laughs> so what if you make a crappy song in the end you still practiced making a song and yeah yeah if we put too much in the final product th th that's a that's a recipe for like frustration writer's block like yeah. sometimes you got to just be willing to push through it and and then just call it a day yeah yeah for sure and i I like that that kind of reminds me of something that I that's kind of a little thing that I tell myself too is that like I'm not I'm not the god of all my songs. I'm not like the all-knowing 
omniscient God of all my songs. Like maybe I think this song, you know, like I'm confident enough that I know I like this song, but like someone else might think the other song is way better than this one, you know, or when we played this song live, you know, song, you know, someone might like not like my favorite song and they might like this other song that, you know, the guitarist, you know, liked better than me, you know, like you just never know. Like you're not like, it's a weird paradox that like you're, if you're the songwriting and you're performing, then um, you need to be confident about it, but also you're not like your taste, like, you know, your taste about your own 45 minutes of music will not be the same as someone else's, experience of it or their taste about it (laughs) you know and so like in a way that's comforting i think that's pretty like it's it helped it helps me that's a piece which helps me like make a full project because i'm like you know you know like i got seven songs on this ep and some people you know this song that means a lot to me and that i spent a lot of time on might be might be something that someone else just like skips over (laughs) you know and they like they like the other thing that's more dancey and groovy or something you know so well you have no control over that you don't know what other yeah you can't control what other people are going to think and it it could be a matter of their personal taste it could be their mood it could be what time of day they heard it there's a bazillion factors that will affect how they feel and that can drive you crazy, but I think you find comfort in it because you let go of that. You, because since you can't control it, you might as well not worry about it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. Exactly. It take on it's, it's comforting life. to me. It helps yeah. me just. It helps me make the work because if you you know if you think about it more, you know, as like also another way of thinking about it is like okay, I'm I'm making art. I'm art. I'm making art, and I'm making things. You know, I do it regularly. It's important to me. I enjoy it a lot. I like to, you know, collaborate with people and, and like, I'm just making a certain like volume or like pile of work. And then like, that's what I'm, that's what I'll have to offer after six months. Like, and that's like, you know, if after I like that old, there's, um, isn't there a poem, something like, uh, what is it? Uh, a, p- a piece of art is only is never finished only abandoned mm-hmm. or something or who who's isn't that some kind of like french poem or something I, i've <laughs> i've seen that attributed to so many sources by now picasso da vinci to like <laughs> bob dylan like <laughs> yeah yeah I, it's it one was... of those things where i don't even know anymore because the internet has polluted it yeah <laughs> and maybe yeah, no one I ever said the... it's just a thing that caught on i don't know the first time I heard it was from a filmmaker, um, Jim Jarmish. Do you know who Jim Jarmish is? No. Nope. I think he said it. He um, he did some great movies. He, uh, or I should say, movies that I really like. He did some great movies. Uh, <laughs> uh, Broken Flowers with Bill Murray, um, Stranger Than Paradise, Mystery Train, um, a whole bunch of others. Tom Waits was in some of his movies actually nice. so um ghost dog with forrest whitaker that's one of my that's one of my top tens um yeah ghost dog with forrest whitaker <laughs> yeah so um but he says it he says it in an interview just like um that like you know anyway something like a poem is never finished only abandoned or something like that but who know who knows who originally said it <laughs> i like that i don't whoever said it thank you um <laughs> yeah because you can especially i think with computer based music you can work on it forever you can try a new compressor here let's 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 EQ this let's see and so much of it is choice too for instance yeah. we were mixing our album and like you listen to albums you like and you're like, all right, okay, so the vocals like sit here in the mix. They're kind of like in the middle and a little bit buried by some of the drums. And and then you listen to this other album that you love and it's like, wow, the vocals are really up front. It sounds like he's singing in your ear. And then this one, I can't even hardly make him out, but I, I know it's there, but 
so like so much of it is just a choice. There's no answer of like how bassy should it be, how trebly, how loud the guitars or the vocals or the drums or should the cymbals be like there's just no answer to that stuff. And you can try everything <laughs> in the computer. Yeah. You can give everything a shot and sometimes you just gotta let it go so you can do something else. And I've I spoke with Adam Roxar, who's a mm -hmm. he's a teacher at NYU, teaches music and um great visual artist and musician. Uh he makes stuff as mm -hmm. aesthetic candy for anyone. So he, he did this uh plug in for live, a Max for Live thing called Brain Candy. It's a really awesome visualizer. I used it for like so many videos on January this year. Just it's great. But cool. He he said candy. to me, um, yeah, brain candy. He said okay. to me on that conversation, um, he tries to work as fast as he can and make stuff and just make stuff. And he, he thinks of his art as artifact. So kind of like, as like a civilization leaves behind pottery and, you know, tools or whatever. It's not necessarily their best thing that they have the greatest bowl or whatever, but it's like what you find. And mm. it was like, as they were going through their thing, they left behind artifacts and that's how he sees it with his stuff, like leaving behind artifacts. And mm. you know, there's something to be said about like working on like a masterpiece and getting something as good as you can. But if you don't draw the line in the sand after a while, you know, you end up like Guns N' Roses with Chinese democracy. <laughs> Like that was supposed to be the great album going to be like in the nineties, early mid nineties, whatever. And it, it didn't come out until like after the year 2000, it just, you know, it got too big for, it got too big to ever be completed. And, and mm -hmm. I never even listened to it. So I don't even know. I can't comment on <laughs> its quality, but it, I've it, never heard of it. Yeah. That's interesting. I, I just, I've it, never heard of it. I guess like it just, I mean, this is the story I get from it. So there could be some just stuff I'm making Like up. some some kind of rock opera or something? Like I, I just think it was like, you know, Axl Rose's great masterpiece, his, his opus, whatever. And <laughs> it just took forever to come out. He just never finished it until like, he finished it eventually, but it was like to the point where it was the unfinished Guns N' Roses album forever. And it mm -hmm. was, you know, by then, like the musical landscape had changed 13 times. Um, right. <laughs> I mean, so like, there's something cool about making your masterpiece, but you have to draw the line too, and you have to just call it done. Right. I'm, well, look, you don't have to do anything. You can do right. whatever you want. You can spend your whole life working on one song if that's what you want to do. But I think for a lot of us, like we want to like make more stuff and sometimes yeah. you got to just cut things loose let them go you know and you know mm -hmm. it's not a it's not really as big a deal to anyone else is as it is to you right <laughs> <laughs> even even for yeah. like axel rose i'm sure like everyone kind of moved on they stopped waiting for it and you know he eventually mm -hmm. did it and that's great and i, I hope it's great <laughs> But you know, I by then I was no longer really that interested in new Guns N' Roses. Right. Yeah, but no, I like your point about that. It's hard to. Yeah, I think especially. It sounds like you know, if you endlessly try to develop or tinker with something, you know. It 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 can often be delayed a significant amount of time. And also if you have the intention of making it like your magnum opus or <laughs> like your, your best thing ever, then like you also find yourself in all kinds of like mental entanglements, you know, about like when, when the thing will be done, <laughs> when it will be finished. Mm -hmm. so. It gets so big in your head. Mm -hmm. I, I really like working fast and finishing stuff. Cause then I can also just kind of have fun with it too. It's like, you know, if I'm going to make one song a year, then, oh my God, it's going to be so stressful, right? And it's going to have to be just right. And it's going to have to do this and that. And But if I make like 30, 
you know, I can have a couple yeah. of these things that are completely crazy experiments and not feel bad about it and probably learn a lot. And I'm going through the process of making a song 30 times more. So I'm mm -hmm. working on the skills more. Yeah. yeah. I think that's valuable. I like that way better personally. And, you know, I wouldn't yeah. ever tell anyone one's better than the other. But I, I you know, because a lot of that stuff too, for me, the endless like mixing and crafting and trying to get everything right and perfect, I, I don't mm -hmm. like that as much as the fun of like finding the new song and be like, oh, that's a cool thing. That's, I like this. Right on. Yeah. I like being yeah. in that space more. Which is why I have a lot of unfinished stuff too. Because, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's see what happens today. What's going to happen? And, you know, then mm -hmm. tomorrow it's like not finish the project. It's let's see what happened today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So there's yeah. trade offs, but um, yeah, I don't know. I, mm -hmm. I'm starting to feel more and more like, you know, our, our time is limited and uh, I want to do as much as I can. Yeah, yeah. Do you see yourself, what What do you see yourself doing a year or two from now? Do you have any kind of shorter term goals in terms of your music or do you want to keep, or do you like the way that things are set up for you now? I'm, um, so I don't know, a year is hard to say. That's, that's feels long-term. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I'm working on some songs right now that kind of like rock a little bit I'm thinking of them as like psychedelic rock. I don't know how psychedelic they are, but that's how I, it's, it is in my head. And uh, mm -hmm. you know, I'm pretty much done with them. And then the next thing I really want to do after that is work on some music that's more like the way I was performing my music live with Ableton. So like controllers and um, mm -hmm. a lot of improvisation and stuff in there. Um, I, I miss mm -hmm. doing that. So I want to get back to that. But it's also like I'm thinking about like the podcast and making packs and stuff. Um, cool. You know, like I'm. Yeah. I I think it's it's healthy for me to get involved in a project that I'm excited about, and then have the next thing I'm excited about on its heels. So I'm like at the point with these songs where I don't want to do much longer just because I'm excited to go on to the next thing and I can't really get to the next thing until I get these out of the way. So it's like, you know, like conveyor belt and probably I would, if I had to guess right now, after I explore this for a little while, I'm probably going to want to do like acoustic guitar or something, <laughs> you know? So mm -hmm. that's that would be my guess of where I would go next, but I don't know. that I might mm -hmm. find whatever I find, so... Um, you know, I'm Ooh. lucky in a way that no one is expecting anything of me. You know, there's no one that I don't have to follow any, um, you know, format. They're not expecting like a, this type of record from me or any kind of record. <laughs> so <laughs> there's a freedom in that, yeah. you know, there's, there's a cost when you are kind of like bound mm -hmm. to, you know, I got to make the next album, you know, insert whatever artist people expect it to be the next thing in that road. There's, you know, only right. very few artists that like, whenever they write an album, you're like, what the hell is this one going to be? That, mm -hmm. that they're allowed to get away with that. Yeah. But yeah. I feel bad asking you that question, like right on the heels of you releasing an album. <laughs> Cause it's like, you, I, it's cool to like sit back and enjoy it and celebrate it. But I, th I d personally, I think it's also smart to yeah. not sit back too long. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm not in a sit back frame of mind. Um, I definitely. I have a lot of. I have a lot. I have a few intentions for this coming year. Yeah, and I. I don't. Um, I mean, this has to do with two, also like kind of how you relate to your songs, like how I relate to my songs is like, I've composed it. I've recorded it. I've played it. Like, you know, I'm familiar with it a hundred times over. And when it's, when it's done, it's very relieving for me that mm -hmm. like it's done. And like, you know, part of my personality is like, I want to be done with it. Like, I don't want to play those songs another hundred times, <laughs> you know, like I have this feeling of like, that I would let 
<laughs> yeah, of like releasing it. And I'd, I'd like to, and I also have a lot of creative energy. I have, you know, I have a lot of, um, I really want to do in the short term, I want to, I have a bunch of grooves. I have a bunch of like synthy hip hoppy groove things happening. And I really want to develop those. And um, I don't know if that'll be a full project, but what I'm really working on is kind of a different style of songwriting than I've been doing um, and trying to expand my understanding of, and my practice really of how, how to make, um, how do you make dance tracks? Like, how do you just focus on a vibe? You know, like mm -hmm. how do, how does, how does, uh, you know, if you go to like, you know, if you go out and like the DJ is really good and the whole thing's like a vibe and there's not a lot of lyrics and like, how do they, you know, how, I've been I've been really looking at composing grooves and and like experimenting with synths and and the chain and stuff and also thinking about like oh how do I make that work for like that's a pretty simple idea like how do I make that small scale idea work for like three minutes because mm -hmm. the 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 DJ kind of house people are really good at that yeah. <laughs> you know they're they're really good at like this kind of like really condensed idea and just making that like varying that really condensed idea, you know, enough so that it stays interesting for like two and a half, three minutes. So I've been really interested in that. And I, I have a lot of fragments that would work with that kind of format. Um, so that's kind of what I'm doing in the, in the short term right now. Um, mm. And I'm, I'm stoked about that. Uh and then there's another thing that I would really like to do, which I really want to make an indie film and I want to compose all the music for an indie film. Not like a full length. It could even be like 20 minutes long or maybe 30 minutes long. But I love like, I love indie animated movies, you know, and like, I would like to, I would like to have like, you know, so that's, that's another thing which would, which would require a lot of time, but like, I would like to, um, I would like to make a short film, something that's like 15, to, somewhere between 15 minutes and 30 minutes. And I want to do the music for it and, and maybe in include some other people in that as well. So those are the two things I'd like to spend a lot of time on this, this coming year or maybe year and a half. <laughs> ah, that's cool. Um, and that's, that's, yeah. those are different avenues for you. You know, and that's something I'm seeing in your, music you know the first because you have two band camp pages that i've come across here you've got mm -hmm. the the yase mare <laughs> i had to look yeah. at my pronunciation for that <laughs> and but then you also have your own that's just your name matthew petre and those yeah. are the more like americana singer songwriter type of things but yep. <clears throat> it's cool that there's like this one thing you're doing and then there's an evolution it sounds like you're ready to even just take that another direction because you have two Yase Mare albums. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe is that like a thing for you? you think like a two album? Uh, I want I want to do another one of those. No, I want to do another one of those because that's like Yase Mare feels like my. That's like, that's like my project, which is really connected to like the style of songwriting that I've I've done in my life and that I've developed mm. and I want to do another Yase Mari project for sure. Um, I have other, you know, I have a lot of kind of particle song ideas that are, that are not complete. Um, um, so there's more material there. And I, right. I just don't know if I'm going to be prioritizing for the last two years, I wanted to do those projects. And now I want to like, I just want to expand a little bit and kind of like learn and experiment with some, with some, like some groove dance stuff. Hmm. And um, I just keep, keep vibing with just really my instinct is like, I, that I love, I really love movies and I really love listening to the soundtracks of movies. So it's part, I really want to like kind of join with that somehow. So yeah. 
maybe it could be a collaboration or it could be something that I just, that I just, you know, uh, do entirely myself. I'm not sure. Hmm. <laughs> so yeah. yeah. New, new worlds to explore either way. Yeah. Yeah. It's exciting to me. Like it's, it's interesting and exciting to me to kind of continue to like, yeah, continue to like expand the universe of how I think about composition and how I understand that sounds work with visual things. And, you know, that's kind of an area that I'm not, I don't, haven't done a lot with. So mm. I'm, I'm curious, like, you know, um, how visuals link with with songs and i noticed you've done some of that as well like you've done you have some you're playing with filter like background filters that are neon colored right for your for some of your songs on youtube i think it was the my heart was wrong is uh, that the one where yeah, you have a, so that's one of those a, songs from these collection i'm working on these mm -hmm. psychedelic rock type things yeah, um, yeah. And well, I mean, really, all those visuals are brain candy that I was telling you about. Oh, the really? Next for Live pack. Oh, okay. I believe it's on Ableton's site. I'll have to, I'll put this okay. in the show notes because it is cool. so cool. Um, and Adam is such a cool guy and his work is awesome. Mm -hmm. So um, I want people to be aware of it. But what was really nice about using brain candy, so to explain how it works, is you have one device called brain candy and you put that somewhere in your session and then you have other devices called ear candy and you put those on individual tracks and it listens to the various aspects of that track so the volume the timbre the transients and you can map mm -hmm. so uh, that's ear candy it listens to the different aspects of your song of your mm -hmm. sorry of your individual tracks of your song brain candy is like the brains of it where it creates the visuals and you mm. can map the parameters of your sound to different controls in the visuals so you can say have oh. the transient of your drum track affect like the color of the video and for for those mm. january things really what i mostly did is i just set up a camera and kind of like moved in front of it <laughs> and uh mm -hmm. let the music move the dials and controls within the brain candy device so that the visuals are moving with the music. Um, I mean, some of it, it's very abstract, you know, it's not like, I, I could probably spend more time making it more interesting, but again, it was one night in January where I wanted to finish something and put it on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So it was great for working fast. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it's just, uh, it's I I do enjoy that a lot. I just often have trouble finding the time for it. Maybe that's like a goal of mine is to find ways to get more time to do stuff. Because um, a lot of the things that I'm I'm doing, um, even like the podcast, you know, the conversation part is great. Like I love it, but then there's like you know a couple hours of putting it together and releasing it. Mm -hmm. that to me is not the part I'm as excited about. <laughs> right, I'd right. rather record another podcast, you know, or I'd rather work on a song or make a new live pack or, or do a weird video for a song or, or, you know, whatever it's that stuff is, uh, yeah. Where, uh, where I'd like to trim things around. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, that, that device is really cool for just generating stuff fast and you could definitely, um, make pretty, interesting live visuals you know like for a live show and then you can record it and then maybe bring it into video editing and mm. you know work in some like other camera work mm -hmm. and make cool trippy stuff it's, it's definitely leans towards the yeah. like trippy <laughs> psychedelic yeah. feeling um which is also kind of cool because that's like a lot of what adam's work is like it's it's very weird and bizarre. It's working. Yeah, it's working. It, it it works well. I think it if if I could name drop it kind of reminds me of um like early Tame Impala. Oh, cool. Have you heard Have you heard Tame Impala's early record? I think it's the Lonerism record. Yes, yeah. But yeah, it kind of reminds me it just has like I think it's the timbre of guitar 
Huh. Um, and maybe the way that you're producing the vocal, but I love, I love the way it sounds cool. It sounds like it's a cool sound. It's a cool, thanks. It's you a know, cool version of rock and roll. You know, that's what I stumbled upon was the sound. And that was a January thing. And mm -hmm. so I found like a drum kit. I threw together. I didn't make the sounds, but I compiled them. And, mm -hmm. uh, the way I recorded the guitars and the vocals, I was like, I like the sound of this. It's kind of like weird and it's not crystal clear it's dirty it's messy um mm -hmm. and then i would just open that session and delete everything and just make a new song in that session almost like a template really and that way of working makes so much sense to me because when you're in a band like you basically have a template you know we got the drum kit is always the drum kit the guitar is basically the guitar sound the bass and then so you mm -hmm. have a template um, but in your DAW and especially as you get like more electronic, I feel like the tendency is to mm -hmm. always change everything, to change the palette completely every time. But for this stuff, it was, yeah, okay. I made a song. I like the way it sounds. Let's delete everything and make a new one with everything the same. And in the end, I think it makes the whole album more cohesive and um it has a sound mm -hmm. and it's like oh this is one of those songs from that album i like that i like when albums feel like albums i also like when they go crazy and weird and there's a million different songs so I, you know but that's something i guess i've kind of mm -hmm. played with that before so now i want to do that just get like yeah. a, a style to to an yeah, album. Well, even if yeah yeah it's cool. I mean, even if you, I believe, yeah, even if you could also, you know, because you're doing the January thing, I mean, obviously you have all that material for, for, for further development. So yeah. if you wanted to like, you know, maybe write some new parts for that song or write a, a final jam section for or whatever, whatever you wanted to do. I mean, you, you have it all as like material, you know, Mm -hmm. and so that's cool that's cool as well it's like you it's always a win like if you make a little piece of music it's always a win <laughs> yeah you can always be like reframed and re you know recast remixed etc so yeah i yeah. encourage like we took the sampling class right so i always mm -hmm. encourage people like everything's a sample even like your own songs so if you've got like a bunch of songs that are maybe just loops and you don't know what to do with it. It's an eight bar loop you like a lot. Sample it, time stretch it, reverse it. Try to see if you can fit it into something else. Or maybe just grab one of the sounds or mm -hmm. don't let it go to waste. You know, there's probably something in there that you liked and for whatever reason didn't get finished, but you can yeah. often still get something out of it, even if it's not what you hoped it would be. Because sometimes when you work on something a little bit, you get to this point where you, in your imagination, it's, it could go in a lot of directions. And they're all like kind of awesome. And in your imagination, they're all perfect too. Like, oh, it'd be really cool if it went to this like really mellow acoustic part. And then you're like, but it could be so neat if it like rocked out here. And like, and then maybe it gets to this mm -hmm. electronic thing that happens. And there are all these like perfect potentials and it's so hard because you have to commit to something and it's imperfect in reality. So I think that's why it's really hard to finish things sometimes because you have all these potential roads that seem perfect in your imagination and then you try one and it's imperfect and all the potentials are still there in your imagination and you just get stuck. And I think the longer you sit with something, the more you're at risk of that. Mm, yeah. I know you, you have mentioned you do like working fast and I think that that's, it has a lot of benefits and it, it, um, I think that's really over the last couple of years helped me to think about, I think, it, I think I didn't write a lot of things, um, when I was more of a, of an inexperienced musician, I didn't write a lot of things cause I, because I wasn't able to work fast. It's kind of like what you were saying toward the beginning of the podcast where um, 
uh, you felt like the, you know, your taste was so strong or so, so rigid that like you couldn't write things or that's, I feel like that was, you know, like that was, that was a snare for me when I was a younger musician that I was like, oh, like this is, this is not nearly as cool as Led Zeppelin. <laughs> like I want this to sound, I want this to sound like right. energetic and wild and crazy. And like, this isn't anything like that. Like this, this is not working, <laughs> you know? And so like that thing, that song would never happen. Like that idea never happened. So, um, but now as I've, yeah, you know, as, as I've gotten more experienced and like more, I don't know, maybe just, I, I've just committed myself to to finishing songs and and finishing the ideas and all that. Like it's really helped to, and and a lot of that comes from working faster and for being like, just being more personally like positive. <laughs> like, yeah. like I guess some of that crit that internal criticism is really like negative. It's really like a snare. It's really toxic, I guess. But you know, if you work faster, you don't really give your mind time to do that. <laughs> You're just like it's true. yeah this is cool like I'm, i like a hundred songs that go like a minor to d minor i'm doing this like let's do that for like four minutes and play with it <laughs> you know so, right so well um yeah you don't give yourself as much time to compare it and if once you start comparing which is almost inevitable you've got your baby idea it's like just being born it's not even you know <laughs> born yet right you're so gentle yeah you, you and just, you, your baby you're, you're comparing it to led zeppelin <laughs> which right led zeppelin not with a baby idea either led zeppelin with the finished record the finished song time tested <laughs> and printed in your heart you know yeah some of the best musicians and producers and engineers like it's just a team of people that came together to make this music and then the culture has also turned it into something larger than life and now your baby idea oh it doesn't sound like let's up let's no good yeah. <laughs> right like comparing yeah. like a little leaguer to you know mickey manhole or something and his prime yeah it's not fair to yeah. your idea but the longer you linger yeah. in that spot of like the idea and it's you're still nurturing it the more time you have to go there and think these things sure and when you work faster you can push through that a bit and also you're in like a vibe when you're writing something you've got this feeling and then you're in the zone you you get it you're like yeah this is i'm really grooving on this right now and tomorrow you might not be and the next day you might not be um, George Harrison uh, did an interview or he's heard him say this somewhere where when he was starting to write his songs he like asked John Lennon for a little bit of help John and Paul were like a bit ahead in their songwriting by the time George really got into it and John's advice was finish it the day you start it you know make sure you finish it because you'll never be able to go back to that feeling that place you don't ever get back so if I think if mm -hmm. you can get the idea down to some sort of completion you've caught it you know now you've got it and then you can do your fine tuning over time and often to do that fine tuning you need a fresh set of ears because you don't know what sounds good anymore after a while and our ears adjust to the frequencies we're hearing and maybe your room sounds bassier than every place else in the world and you mix the compensates all these things right but the idea kind of needs to be the faster you can get it <laughs> the better you know just to lay it out in my opinion i think because i know mm -hmm. like i've had things i was really excited about and i put them down for a little while and then sometimes i'll even listen to it a few times like i'll bounce it down and listen in the car and you start getting attached to it the way it is and it's impossible to turn it into anything else after that I think your imagination mm -hmm. makes all those roads of perfection and possibility, you know, this could be, could be this, could be this. There's no way you can ever commit to anything after that. Mm -hmm. I have a, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I have a story. I mean, we're, we're already at 6.15, so I, I won't. <laughs> yeah, I won't tell your story. 
I have I have other stories. We haven't talked about fun and play that much or teaching that much. <laughs> so um which is okay. It's yeah. it's okay. Um and uh but I def I definitely don't want you to feel like you know we need to talk until eight o'clock tonight or something. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell so, you sorry. What what are um, you thinking? Oh, but it's it's really a it's really kind of an anecdotal story, but um follows on what you were just saying, which is I wrote this song called Freedom. I wrote this Americana type of song called Freedom with an acoustic guitar and lyrics. Um, um, you know, I told this story in it and it had this middle section, which I played with the time signature and it worked really well. I hadn't done things like that before, but I played with the time signature and like, switched chords on the two and then you know but it, it ended up being a really nice loop and i did it i didn't do it with ableton i just did it with my guitar and um and an amp and I, I just figured it out and i wrote down okay change it here da, 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 can't make sure you count it and um but it, it it's a song that i didn't record for a while and um and i sat on it for you know i sat on it for at least six months or something. And I was also writing other songs. So the song just sort of like, I was like, I really like that song, but it's just like, I wasn't feeling it anymore, even though it like, it totally worked. And I had this complete song. So what happened was that middle section, I really liked that middle section because I had worked a lot on it. So that middle section became the final part of Brighter Love. And I, what I did was, I recorded it with a bunch with electric guitar layers and I um, warped it. Um, it's a five layer loop. I think I, I may have mentioned this to you in an email, but it's like yeah. a five layer. It's a five layer guitar loop, um, which is slightly warped to fit into the BPM in Ableton and then improvised over and, and sculpted with a, with a looping pedal basically. And then I just, re and I recorded it with an H4 and I I played the loop and recorded it with an H4 and then put it into Ableton and, and made it part of that song. But it worked, um, I resurrected, in other words, like I, I basically like brought that song back from the dead and at least kept a part of it that I hadn't lost. I just just totally recast this, the that section, which I really liked. Hmm. And um, it turned out to be something that I, that's, um, you know, it's, it's a little bit, it's uh, ethereal and droney and a little bit reverby and distorted. And um, I really liked the way it worked um, for the end of that song. So I was able to morph. I was also trying to like do something kind of poppy and then have it morph into something a little like stranger and weirder. Hmm. so um you might i was thinking of you too because i i i think from sampling class the, the little piece that i got from it i was like i was like i don't have to record five layers of all these five layers into ableton separately i could just like mic this from my looping pedal and then and then put you know just put that into ableton with the little sd card and then I could use it as an audio file. It's just a five layer audio file that I can, that I can warp and make match to the, to the, um, to the song I've already made. So it's cool. it was, it was fun. It was like a more, like way more sophisticated process than like I'm used to, but it, it worked really well. Yeah. <laughs> and it, the, it lends a character to it also, you know, the, the mm -hmm. sound of it being recorded on the Zoom H4, I think you said, um, is a little bit different than if you would have done it separately and live. It probably would have came out differently and played a little bit differently. Um, also, mm -hmm. might have taken you longer. <laughs> you know, there's something to be said too, like about finding a solution that is quick, you know, that you, you can just, you, you already have it. It already sounds cool. Like, Let's just see how it sounds. You can always do the other thing too, but it's a cool way of, you know, just grabbing it and moving forward and working with it and making it part of it. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, it feels it feels really good to even think about. I haven't thought about that for a while, but it feels really good to think about that like umpteen i don't know how many hours he spent doing that but between like you know playing and improvising over it and then recording it and then like i i really i was like so pleased with it i was so pleased with just stoked with how it sounded you know mm-hmm. and the way it sort of fades in and a different bass line comes in at the end and it just becomes this this wacky thing yeah. <laughs> so so um I was glad that it would be part of the project, but um, yeah, but um, no, I'm so happy to talk with you, you know, tonight and just like touch base, talk about music. Yeah. It's Love fun. It. <laughs> I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm really yeah. happy for you with the release. It's great that you've, you've done it, you know, like, you know, most people don't, most people don't see it through. They don't see the projects through. And it's really cool that you did. I, for anybody that does, anybody that finishes anything, like that's, it's really worth the celebrating, <laughs> you know, <laughs> because also yeah, thanks. there aren't always <laughs> much to celebrate. <laughs> so, you know, like so much of like being a musician and artist, writing songs is like, not even like people fear that no one's going to like it. No one's going to, but the reality is no one even cares half the time. <laughs> don't even want to even listen. You can't even give your music away anymore for free, right? Like, so, right, right. <laughs> so it's, it's just the fact that it was created is great. And, and it is awesome and it's fun to listen to. And there's a lot of cool sounds and nice melodies and interesting feelings. And it does feel like a cohesive thing. It all kind of cool. goes together. Yeah. And it, I think it showcases a lot of sides Thanks. of you as a musician too. Mm-hmm. There's, there's the kind of instrumental stuff at points, but then vocals and then some of it's like natural vocals. Some of it sounds more processed and almost like machine-ized, mechanized kind mm-hmm. of stuff, which is cool. Yeah. You know, so it takes, it takes you as the listener in a lot of directions. And it, you can tell you had fun with it. That that comes across like it's like yeah Matt was like having a good time playing around with things yeah for sure yeah doubling doubling vocals and you know the vocal piece was a big was a big part of this too yeah just like spending a lot I spent a lot more time on vocals on this one on EP two than I did on my last project and it was uh-huh. like yeah it was fun it was fun so I could I could share with you different things that I did and you know, um, either now or later, <laughs> but, you know, just doubling the vocal and then playing with the pitch harmonies is really, is really mm-hmm. like, you know, it's, it's a fun part of, it's a fun part of the creative process. Cause it like, um, it just, it just takes a lot of time because if you have a musical, you know, a vocal figure that's, that's, you know, eight beats long, you can't just like pitch it up or down three semitones like that doesn't work so you really have to play you know you really have to play with each little each syllable basically or each like set of two or three syllables and pitch them a little pitch them in a different way to get different types of harmonies but it's it's fun (laughs) i really liked it and i liked the product i liked the way it came out you know like the way those layers sounded after i was finally done with them (laughs) so um but I, I always think that's the most challenging part, doing the vocals. There's, you know, there's always that weird connection with your own voice thing. I have it, you know, I, I'm, I'm like, I, I guess it's like the most vulnerable part. It's the least comfortable thing I have. Like, and um, I don't know. It's like, you, like your guitar part sounds bad. Like, yeah, well, that guitar wasn't so great. <laughs> but like, but your voice, you can't do that. But plus you have to really pay attention in weird ways when you're recording vocals because you are in one hand, you got to make sure it's in tune and time and it sounds good and it's recorded well. And then you also have to make sure it's performed with emotion. And sometimes that means not being in tune and in time all the time. You get some, a little extra emotion when you reach up to the note compared to if you just hit the note, it, there's a different mm-hmm. feeling. And it's very hard to separate your insecurities 
like on guitar, I make like a weird noise that I didn't mean to make. I'm like, oh, that sounded cool. On my voice, though, it's like, was that cool or is that terrible? <laughs> so, like, you have to really think in these different ways.、Mm-hmm. Um, but it is, you know, it becomes the centerpiece of your song no matter what. It just is. For, it's easy to think. As a producer, like, yeah, but I got all this like really cool sound design and this movement and the drums. Like, you hear the snares, like, slowly changing pitch over the course of the verse. Like, maybe producers will hear that, but regular people just hear the vocals. <laughs> that's like all they hear. And most producers, too, <laughs> that's what you hear first.、Mm-hmm. So it's, um, it's a really challenging part of the process. It, I, th- I agree. I think it's really fun. It can be frustrating too.、Um, mm-hmm. But it's a challenge. It's definitely a challenge. And yeah. It, well, where, I, are you on, where are you on the confidence spectrum in terms of like your, your voice? Are you, like on a, are you really confident that you like the way it sounds generally in terms of timbre? Or are there certain, are there other <laughs> things that you would like your voice to do that it's not doing? Or, It depends on like the second of the day you ask me. <laughs> There are some times I'm like, I really like it. You know, I've, I've grown to accept it and like it.、Um, there are other times where it's、mm-hmm. just like, it feels terrible.、Um, I know I'm not a technical singer. And I wouldn't even tell people I'm a singer. You know, like, I, it's like I use my voice. In my songs, but I wouldn't say I'm a singer because <laughs> that just implies like like a proficiency that I don't know. If you asked me to sing a major scale, it would probably sound terrible and it wouldn't be in key all the time. And so, but on the other hand, like I do like it when I get it right. You know, I like, I, I've, I've learned to. Work with it, I guess, you know, and like know what I'm good at and what I'm not as good at. So, like, the technical stuff, pitch, <laughs> like,、um, control isn't always my thing, but I do think I, I have found a way to like tell the story well and put phrases together in an interesting way that, that I like, at least, you know, and, um, I'm okay yeah, with that. I, I like it too. I think it's, wor- it's really working for, Thanks. for what you're doing musically. Yeah, don't put、like. me in the opera. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like that's a big mistake. <laughs> But、um, yeah, like I like, I really enjoy finding like phrasing in lyrics that sound natural. So, like a melody that sounds almost like the way you would say it. Like that's fun、mm-hmm. for me. And I like it when it comes、mm-hmm. together nicely and, and then playing with that. It's fun.、Um, but、mm-hmm. it, takes, it takes a lot of work. And,、uh, yeah. and you know, some people's voices are just have like, like, as soon as they go on the mic, it just sounds amazing. You don't even put anything on it. It's just like, damn, it's just like silk. <laughs> and、mm. uh, for me, it, it takes more work than that.、Mm. Yeah. You know, like, I have lots of takes and experiments and. Practice too. I mean, that's I have to practice it a lot, you know, before、mm. I can like get it right.、Mm-hmm. Do you s i n g Yeah, that's cool. Are you singing chord tones a lot of the time, or are you trying to get to? I don't always it, sometimes think you're talking about, too. Like, you do some talking, like some kind of stabbing. Yeah. Like you stab at the, at the song a little bit. Yeah, I don't always、yeah. think about am I on the chord tone or am I like leading into it or anything.、Um, mm. But I'm looking for like colors and tension, release.、Um, and I'm paying attention to like how that feels with the words and the phrases.、Mm-hmm. Is, it, is this the end of the sentence? Is this the middle of the statement? Is this like a conclusion? So,、mm-hmm. And I let that kind of inform, you know, because like if I'm hitting the chord tone, that's the more like stable, resolved thing generally. But if I'm, you know, like a second above, 
and I'm not thinking this way when I'm singing. A lot of a lot of times I'm I'm singing, I'm gibberish, finding the melodies, and then I figure them out on guitar. And I'm like, oh wow, it's really weird that I'm singing this D over the C major chord. Like, hmm, like cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, but it's not so yeah. much like I'm I'm not thinking like like it's not like when I play guitar and I play a melody, I know what notes I'm playing. Like when I'm singing, like I might kind of know, but I don't really know. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like I know I'm like singing mm-hmm. the tonic maybe, and I know, but um, mm-hmm. yeah, it's it's a little more just by feel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. How about you? Is it? Are like, you like aware? Like I'm I'm on the fourth tone of the scale right here, and <laughs> I wouldn't say when I'm performing it I'm aware, or when I'm recording it, but when I'm writing it I'm aware. Uh-huh. Yeah. So I'm like so so when I'm when I'm when I'm, you know, if the progression is, you know, I don't know, D to G, let's just say if the progression is go is D for four bars and then G, I'm, I'm sorry, D for four beats and then G for four beats. And there's, there's just, I think it's interesting to think about, oh, I could do that in so many different ways. Like I could sing, you know, the D octave and then come down to the B, which is part of the G chord. You know, or I right. could, you know, sing the A while the D's playing. I could sing the A, and then I could I could just stab at the A, and then hit the B, and then the D of the next chord. You know, of the G chord. So like, I'm not. I'm also not like a lot of it's just instinctive for me. But I think I'm aware that I can vary it in certain ways. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not like I'm like writing it down on a on a staff or something. It's just. I want to play with it until I think it's pretty, (laughs) you know, you know, I'm just going to play with those notes until I think they're pretty. And it's, it's really that it's that simple. Like, Oh, am I going to sing attention? Like, you know, if you're going to sing a D over a C chord or you're singing the nine or the sus two. And so like, Oh, maybe I really think that's pretty. Maybe I'll do that. (laughs) Maybe I'll sing the D and then, if it's going to, if, if the C chord is going to go to a G, I'll just, I'll start on the D and that'll be pretty because C nine sounds awesome. <laughs> and then, you know, here comes the G, you know, I'll sing, I'll sing the B a couple times of the G chord. And then maybe I'll go up to the C, you know, maybe I'll go up to the sus four. And then when I come back to my, uh, my C chord again, I'll sing the D. Hmm. So I'll be at C nine again. So, you know, you, I just like to play with it. Like, I'll just literally sit there with my keyboard, be like, I like the way the score progression is. Let me, vi- let me like, let me play with this vocal melody. And then when I like it, I'll just, I'll start practicing it vocally. You know, right. the stuff on my, the, you know, I'll just, so that's my process for mm-hmm. the vocal melody. Cause I, I, and my, my, just my idea is like, I just want it to sound pretty. And, and it just needs to be a little bit different than the chorus, <laughs> you know? Yeah. You know? Um, I think so. about that a bit. Um, I, I do, th- I think in shapes a lot with the vocal melodies. Is it going mm-hmm. up and then down or is it going down and up? And mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. then with the choruses, I, I try to do something different usually. And that goes for a lot of the instruments, even like guitar rhythms. I'm like, all right, I should change the rhythm here. Change it contrast mm-hmm. it or, or all right i didn't hit this chord in the verse so maybe we should hit it in the chorus um mm-hmm. just juxtaposition type of thinking mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Oh, over the last something that's helped me with it too over the last couple of years is i really was like excuse me i was figuring out the the vocal melodies of songs that i like like even like stuff like wilco just like, how is Jeff Tweedy singing this song? He's su- he's such an understated singer. Yeah, you know, he's Jeff like, Tweedy. it's great. Yeah, his book I love too. His, how his to book is song. so great. Love it. Yeah, I yeah. love that book. And I don't I don't read a lot of memoirs, but I really enjoyed that book too. Well, that's that's the songwriting. Yeah, it's so good. It's so yeah. great. Yeah, that book. But he, I was like, how is he making these songs sound so pretty? You know, so I'd be like, okay, what is you know that song like Impossible Germany? Like, what's his vocal melody in? in impossible Germany or, you know, um, California stars, that song, um, 
I want to rest my heavy head tonight on a bed of California stars. I want to lay my pretty bones tonight on a bed. You know, like, it's just mm. pretty. Like, what's he doing? And it's not super. It's that That's a one, four, five song, you yeah. know? Well, Even like when one... you think about that melody, right? Like the yeah. the certain words, like rest, uh, bed. Mm-hmm. You know, like they land. They just like land you, on the downbeat, like yeah. you I would. You know, like you would <laughs> in yeah. real life. So I like the <laughs> the mimicry of the coming down. You know, resting. Yeah, there's like a longing. I want to rest. It goes up yeah. and then. It comes down. It's so, yeah, yeah, he's playing. It's like singing sixteenth notes there, and it's and he's landing on the one. You know, it's it's great. Yeah, <laughs> it's great, and it's it's like so simple. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's beautifully simple, and I like. You know, I've I've never turned that song off. Anytime it comes out, I'm like, yes, right. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is this is like drums, guitar, a, a a voice, and you know. So I started like, um, yeah, I just started like that. Also, in my own process, helped me a lot. Like, figure out like, you know, where is the phrase? Like, like you're saying, like, where's the phrase landing? Where does it start? How many syllables is it? You know, is he singing the chord tones, or is he is he playing around with ninths or? 11th or whatever but i found that was really helpful for me because it i could it helped me be aware of it more yeah like it just even you know it helped me be aware of like like it's not accidental that this song sounds great <laughs> you know right. you know it's like if you're playing an a a major and someone singing a c sharp to a d like that's pretty because he's you know you're on the three and then you go to the d which is the sus four and like it just has a good vibe. I don't know why, but I just I thought it was helpful for me to kind of track that a little bit. And after I started doing that, it became more more natural as well. It didn't feel like pain, you know, painstaking. Like right. it felt um I and I don't have a perfect ear at all. Like I couldn't, you know, even if I hear stuff on the radio, I'm like, I don't know what key it's in. I'd have to like sit at a piano and figure it out, <laughs> you know. Hmm. But like if I sit there and I actually learn the song, like learn the chords and then think about the way the vocal is layered on the chords, it helps that that has helped me a lot mm-hmm. um in my own songwriting. Yeah. yeah, it gives you ideas, things to try. Like, oh what if I try this melody? We'll start early, we won't wait till one, we'll start late, we'll We'll cat. We'll yeah. go over the chord. We'll pass. Let the chord pass before we resolve this. And mm-hmm. All those ways just give you ideas. That's cool. Yeah, that's a great song too. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna listen to that tonight. Yeah, that, that'll be like my too. celebration of our of our right. combo. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Da, 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 da. Yeah. All right. Well, cool, man. <laughs> this is a lot of fun. Um, yeah. Where do you like to send people first when you say, hey, check out my music? Um, well, I have a new website, which is which is published recently. I worked on it this winter. So I made I made little signs. <laughs> so yasemaremusic.com. Mm-hmm. Here it is. Can we see it? Oh, nice. Yeah. Yasemare yeah. Music. Oops, I'm covering it. I'll Yase spell Mare that. Music to- it's Y-A-S-E-I-M-A-R-E music.com yep and then i'm on instagram i'm at matthew sounds oh yeah is it is it gonna look backwards <laughs> no i don't think so <laughs> on, i on see the it camera. forwards okay yeah so at matthew sounds um on instagram those are the main ways people can contact me um and i have a gmail a yase mare at gmail mm. um and i have a band camp so yeah those are the main ways at the moment and um send me you know send me a message anytime and you know say hi <laughs> hmm. i'll put all so, that in the show notes too so people can just click on it cool okay cool so we don't have to <laughs> put on my, my lo-fi no that's uh, good no uh, listen <laughs> i th- i think this goes for all of us um you got to make it easy for people to find your stuff you know don't mm. if 
if they have to put work into it, you're going to lose people, you know? So、mm -hmm. if you're like a musician and you have an email for your music, put it in the signature. It should,、mm -hmm. <laughs> you can't miss the opportunity for someone to click on it.、Um, uh, it should just、mm -hmm. be there, you know? Like, you know, you don't have to like, Be over too crazy you and like spammy. I'm not saying that, but like it should be at the bottom of your email. It should be where people can find it. And like what you just did, like there's people that are watching that might have saw them. If one person, you know, <laughs> that's a win. You know, you got to build yeah, it like、yeah. one person at a time. And、um, it, it's sad if you lose that opportunity. So, no, good idea. That was smart. Yeah. Especially because. <laughs> Because yours takes a little spelling, you know, like yeah,、uh, yeah. You're not, <laughs> not, people are going to not know how to spell that.、Yeah. So it's, And, it's、uh, yeah, I was also thinking、idea. it might be easy if maybe we could flash this in the beginning or something too. If people don't watch like the two hours we've done, <laughs> you know, maybe、yeah. we could, or if I guess if, yeah, if you put it in the little caption, yeah, it'll be in like easy, the YouTube description, it'll be on the podcast、yeah. show notes. on... The、For、website、sure. post wherever you get your podcast, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> you should、That's、find、awesome. this link. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I appreciate it so much. It's been great to great to touch base and talk. And I'm sure we could, you know, I, I would love to talk to you anytime. So give me、yeah. a holler, send me a message, you know, and、um, yeah, let's talk about music and Ableton anytime.、Cool. <laughs> yeah, we did leave some stones unturned. So there's、for、unfinished、sure. business here. But yeah, thank you、yeah. really for taking the time. Thanks for your work and putting out a cool record. And,、um, you know, keep at it. It's really、yeah. great to see you. And、uh, thanks so much. Great to see you too. All right. Yeah, we'll be in touch. Cool. Cool. And thank cool. you all for listening. Enjoy your day. <laughs>、hey. If you enjoyed the music production podcast, please consider giving it a review on your favorite podcast provider and share it with a friend, somebody that you think might enjoy the show and get something out of it. That would mean a lot to me. And if you want to check out more of my work, including sound packs, tutorials, etc., head over to brianfunk.com. Thanks so much for listening and have a great day.